Hi, Carl here with Visionscape's Virtual Property Architect. I'm going to be your guide today into the world of virtual properties. Our company, Landscape Studio 7, offers landscape design and 3D modeling, and Virtual Property Architect is our first choice. It reduces our build time, offers exceptional products and materials, and great movies. We're going to start today by launching a virtual property and exploring its online assets. Here we are at Visionscape.com. Let's start by logging in. If you don't already have an account, you can create a free one here. If not, log in. As you can see under Properties, I have two uploaded. Let's click on Hampton House Series, as this is the one I will be showing you today. Here's the name of your property, Hampton House Series. You can upload and save screenshots shown here, photos of the existing site, movies and plans to create your design. You can also share your property, public or private. I want to share this with you so I'm going to remain on public. You can also launch your virtual property to edit and continue building. Click launch, highlight virtual property architect, open application. I created this property with a 2011 MacBook Pro with an AMD Radeon HD 6750 graphics card, a more than sufficient machine. Okay, now we have launched our design. Before we go over our toolbar and ribbon tabs, let's get used to navigating through the scene. You're going to want to always use a mouse. You can start by right click and holding and orbit your camera around your property. You can also rotate your mouse wheel in and out to zoom. You can also use your camera orbit control tool located on your left toolbar, left click and hold to also orbit around your property. To select an object, use your select tool. You can select windows, plants, or any object. You can also click on another window. On your ribbon tabs, you can use your edit and select similar. This will select all of the windows on your property. To deselect, you can just click outside the house. You can also rotate your mouse wheel to zoom, as said before. However, you can also zoom by using clicking on a window and using your zoom to selection tool located here. This will automatically zoom you onto the object that you have selected. Or you can use the zoom to rectangle tool, which will allow you to click on the same window or another object and will zoom you automatically to that window as shown. There is also a enable and disable auto elevation tool located in your left hand toolbar. This is another very important tool which we will go over in a future tutorial. Let's go over the keyboard. You can use your arrow keys to orbit the camera and pan right and left or closer and further away by using up and down. You can also use your A and D command to rotate the camera left and rotate the camera right plus and minus keys rotate the, make the camera higher and lower. You can also right click and hold shift to now pan versus orbit through your property. Let's go over some keyboard shortcuts. One is control select. If by selecting a window and holding control now you can select more than one window or object. You can also hit control A to select all the objects or you can click on a specific object, hit control 
L, and it will collect it will select similar as in all the windows shown here. Also, for another quick zoom tool, if you click on an object and just simply press the Z key, it will zoom to that selection. Let's say you click on this shrub here, okay? If you hold left click and move and rotate your mouse, you'll move that object. Now you can control Z and move that object back to where it was or undo or you can redo by control Y, which will bring it back out to the middle of the lawn. Let's control Z one more time to bring it back to its original setting. Okay, let's review the general layout. Here are your ribbon tabs located on top. Your left toolbar, which you've already touched upon, plan and perspective views, currently highlighted as perspective. Click on plan to see the plan view of your current property. Let's go back to perspective. Also, there are layers, which are extremely helpful. Here you can put specific scenes in detail on a layer, label it, and turn off and on at a specific time. For example, we have our house. Right click, hide house, which is on the house layer, and my house will disappear. Right click back on the house layer, show house, and my house will reappear. Also we have our property details. This is where you can enter your virtual property information as well as adjust your terrain, lot width, lot depth, and the size of grid, which we'll touch upon shortly. Back on your ribbons, we have the open virtual property, an existing virtual property, save, also reason. This is a quick way to open a past property that you've been working on. The virtual property icon here will allow you to visit your virtual property online. You can create movies and screenshots, which we'll go over in future tutorials. You can also search products, which will launch the Visionscape website to automatically launch other products and materials into your current virtual property you're working on. Preferences. Preferences is extremely important. You can adjust your high and low quality setting graphics, shown here low, medium, and high. This will also save the performance of your computer depending on the machine you are using. I'm going to remain on high quality graphics. Also, plant level of detail. This is also another great way to save your computer's performance depending on how many plants you may have on your, on your virtual property. Click override. As you can see, a lot of the plants in my virtual property seem to have disappeared. This is because the software is not fully rendering plants that are a certain distance away from my camera. This way here, improving my computer's performance. Now, as well, if you go to make a, create a screenshot, just remember that your plants will always show up in your screenshot even if you forget to turn override off. Let's turn override off and continue. Edit. Here, we've already touched upon our select tools. You can adjust the time of day by moving right and left. You can also adjust the cloud cover building. Now here is where we can start to construct buildings, patios, and walls. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to your left toolbar and turn on your grid. As you can see here, there's a grid laid up across my property. Next thing you're going to want to do is go into plan view. This way here I can see everything that I'm working with. I'm going to also adjust my grid under property details to one foot. It's just a little bit easier to connect the dots. Also, you're going to want to turn your toggle grid snapping tool to on. It will turn red. This will allow me to connect the dots more easily. Click on my house icon, create house. Let's make a 10 by 10 house. Okay, you can see that my roof appeared. Before I go back into perspective view to see what we've built, let's quickly add a patio by clicking on the patio tool. Now we can uh, connect the dots and click another 
to say 10 by 5 patio behind my house. Note that there are feet along my red line, meaning 5 feet and 10 feet. This is where you can keep the correct dimensions of your proposed patio. Right click, and you can see my patio appears. Now, let's go back over to perspective view. And let's use our Z key to zoom in. And you can see I have created a house like the one behind it. And my patio is selected. Now you can see you can change the pavers and material that you want to use. Let's click Bel Paso, for instance. Pick the color you want and add to scene. This way here, you can add the materials to your objects you've selected. You can also double click and note that you can adjust the size and dimensions of your patio just by left clicking and holding and extending. You can also adjust your house. Click on wall. Here's your wall material. You can change the wall material by choosing another color. Add to scene. Notice that the material and wall color has changed. You can also adjust the roof, dimensions, elevate your house, wall height, roof pitch, and the overhang, as well as simply writing in two feet using your keyboard to signify that you want to elevate that, th that building two feet. There's also the property tab. Here you can add and create landform. We'll go over this in a future tutorial. Landscape. Here's where you can place all of your landscape elements, including plants. Click on plant. When the material lists load, you can simply click on the plant of your choice and add to scene. Once a plant has been added, you can zoom to, and here's your plant. Simply left click and move the plant where you choose. You can also add and place outdoor living as in furniture, structures, and other outdoor accessories. Let's move on to water features. For this, we're going to orbit the camera to the back of our property. The first thing we're going to do is adjust my light. Go back into edit and we're going to move the time of day a little bit to the afternoon so we can get some nice light in the back of our house here. As you can see we have a pool and a lot of really nice outdoor elements. Back to water features. Here is where you can create a pool and pool decking. Same way we added our patio. Now just remember that you can only place a pool when it is on top of pool decking, not on a patio. Plan details. We'll go into plan details in a future tutorial more extensively. However, this is where you can add some quick dimensions, do some custom modeling in your, and create an arc, lines, ellipses, and circles, as well as upload a photo onto a layer so you can trace a previous design. Projects is also where you can manage your properties, layers, and add notes to specific properties for future reference. Let's go back into perspective view. Okay, we're going to add in today by taking a screenshot and uploading it to our virtual property. First thing you're going to want to do is turn our grid off to make sure that it won't be in our screenshot. Let's go back up to main and create screenshot. Make sure upload to virtual property online is clicked. Then hit next. Screenshot name. Let's call this one tutorial one 
description. Thanks for joining us today. Next is create screenshot. Screenshot has been successfully created and uploaded. Hit OK or you can view virtual property online. Let's view the virtual property online. All right. Make sure you're logged in. Go to the appropriate virtual property Hampton House series which we showed you earlier. Under screenshots you can see that now I have three instead of two. Tutorial one as you can see here which is what I named it. And here's my screenshot. Let's click on it to enlarge the photo. Okay, well, I hope you learned a lot today, and please stay tuned for our next tutorial. Thanks. Bye.